Is it? Oh, hold on. I'm not working. Yeah, you haven't put your presentation. Let me just uh, throw it to you. No, I looked after you very well, haven't I? No. Should be. Just talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Once you get into there, you can click away happily. All right. Yep. And it's up on there. So, hi. Uh, so I'm uh, Joe Carlin, actually, I go by Joe, and probably loads of other names as well that I'm not uh, familiar with. So I hold the, what I consider to be quite the privileged position of Director of People and Development at uh, Daniel Thwaites PLC. If you're a beer drinker, you may well be familiar with us. If you're not, you probably won't be. Um, I, I got uh, 20 minutes, that's all I've got, actually. I could probably stand up here for about two hours and talk about uh, my business, but I've got 20 minutes and that's what I'll have. And I want to share with you the journey that we've been going through over the last probably two and a half, three years um, as a business and actually uh, some of my insights. So this is my first time in hospitality. So I'm a relative novice, I would say. And, and some of this, some but not all, came out of just that question, you know, where you, you come into a business new and everyone goes, oh, no, no, it's just the way it is. It's just that sector. It's just hospitality. Um, and then I, I wasn't sat there and thinking, well, yeah, all right then, but what if it isn't just hospitality? So over the next 20 minutes, I'm going to share with you a little bit about who we are, where we came from, um, and actually what our aim was and some of the bits and pieces, and I call them bits and pieces because we're still working through it, that we've done and some of the results that we've got because of it. And hopefully by me sharing that with you, you know, you might encourage you to ask some of the same questions to your business. Okay, so who are we? We're not a log. Um, this is how we looked uh, about three years ago, I'd probably say, a little bit, just as I was coming into the business two and a half years ago. We had four very distinct divisions. Uh, the brewery, which, um, no surprise, brewed beer. We had the pubs, uh, around, I'd say, 270, 300 tenanted and leased pubs. And then we had these two arms um, of what we classify as our traditional hospitality, which are our inns of character, of which there were about, at that time, I'm trying to think, eight. And then we had six four-star hotels and spa underneath this Shire brand. So you, some of you may know them, uh, come across the Shire brand. I mean, they range all the way from Southampton. So we've got the Solent Hotel and Spa in Southampton. If you know anyone that wants to work there, we have some open positions. Um, all the way up to uh, North Lakes in Penrith and kind of small properties from say 12 bedrooms all the way up to hundreds of bedrooms. So that they were kind of, nobody really knew they were part of Daniel Thwaites. And uh, about three years ago, the CEO and a couple of the directors said, actually, the brewery side of the business is probably not where we want to invest and not where we want to spend our time. We can't compete with the, with the really big players like Marston's. Um, actually, do we want to? So that side of the business, the free trade was sold. And um, the brave decision was taken, let's take all that money and let's stick it into all of these properties, let's put it into hospitality. And the aim was simple. The aim was to get to something like this. Uh, and for anybody that's been part of a restructure, anybody that's been part of anything like this knows it's really easy to put a PowerPoint slide up and say, this is where we want to get to. Uh, and actually, that was really easy, putting a PowerPoint slide up. What we discovered, however, is that what that meant was something quite seismic in terms of shift of thinking. What we hadn't realized, I guess, and, and you know, me coming in asking these random weird questions like, well, what if it is in hospitality? sparked a whole load of different conversations that went along the lines of, well, how do we make it feel like one business? So we had, at that time, four values, yeah, four sets of values, um, all of which were made by the directors sitting in some hotel somewhere, coming up with what they th thought looked great on paper, none of which worked. Um, <clears throat> we also had uh, really big plans for the future. And when I say really big, you know, really big for us, you know, quite a small-ish northern business. You know, we are a traditional northern business. And the, what was clear was actually what's our aim. So you can see our aim up there. Yeah, we want to provide superb hospitality and outstanding properties in great locations. That's the aim. That's the mission. That's what we want to do. 
how are we going to get there was the um, was a bit of the question so he said all right okay how are we going to get there so we need to invest we need to buy more properties we need to make the most of what we've got so we need to invest in the ones we've got and make them even better than they are today and to do that we need to fuel all of that by um, doing great things with our people kind of unlocking that potential so we sort of sat there and said, okay, well, we've got a finite resource. We, you know, we're not an enormously cash-rich business. So we've got finite resource, both from a cash and people perspective. What do we do with all of that? How do we move forward? How do we start? So we started from the bottom. We started with our culture. And what we did, and it's probably not amazing to you guys, but um, to us then at Thwaites, you know, kind of a couple of years ago, very traditional business, family business over 200 years old when I rocked up and said well why don't we just go and ask people you know there was a huge sharp intake of breath there was like this is hospitality you don't do that you can't ask people you can't take them off the floor they've got people to serve um so you know I kind of made the promise and said I promise it'll only be 45 minutes that'll be it 45 minutes of their time and that's it so that they kind of reluctantly agreed. And I think it was like the honeymoon period with the CEO, you know, with me. So he said, yeah, yeah, sure, Joe, that's fine. And off I went. And we created 45-minute workshops. And um, the whole premise of it was to find out what is our culture? What is it really like to work for Daniel Thwaites? I don't care which property you're in, but what's it really like? Uh, let me click. Oh, yeah. So it took us. So you'll see there some pictures. I've got billions of pictures. Um, what you'll see there is no chairs, no tables. What you don't see is the Haribo. And we went through something like two tons of Haribo or something ridiculous. Um, it took six months to complete from start to finish. We saw in the region of 950 employees. And at that time, we had around 1,400 employees. That's not a small number. We had 58 workshops and we collected over 2,500 words. And actually, we recently moved head office, and I've still got those words because I can't part with them. You know, I feel kind of a, a, a sense with them. What you'll also see, you'll see oh, a couple of um, images. So we uh, recruited a graphic recorder. I think he called himself a graphic recorder. And we said, look, can you draw what we're saying? Because actually, that might mean something to people. And we've got hundreds of pictures now, and we put them on mugs, and they're on walls, and you know people have painted them and what we came up with was our four guiding principles and what we realized was it didn't matter what division what property you were in those things were entirely the same everywhere and our four guiding principles are um, innovation warm hospitality craftsmanship and eye for quality and that helped us springboard this concept of well, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter what you're doing, and it doesn't matter if you're sitting in head office, actually, or in the brewery, or looking after our four Shire horses that we've got. Those things are the same. So it started to break down the, well, we do it this way because it's just hospitality. So that's great. I just put my feet up then for the rest of the time. No, I, if only. Actually, that didn't, that, that gave us some impetus for action, but it, it didn't take us all the way. And we still needed to continue to move forward. And what we were facing, um, and I say we, people team, you know, a few others, was this actually how, how we've got all of these new properties, you know, we're kind of building, we're, we're quite a, we want to be a progressive business. But actually, how do we then nurture that? How do we keep pushing it forward? So what we, what we decided was actually we need to change, and we need to change more fundamentally than we thought before. And that was really scary to actually go, okay, actually, we're going to have to do some of this now. So our aim remained the same. It was the same. That stood the test of time. Uh, by the way, that's Langdale Chase Hotel on Windermere. I recommend you go, one of uh, Daniel Thwaites' properties. Our strategy was the same. That didn't change. You know, we tested it. It was sound. It was robust. But our organization didn't. It just wasn't matching up. So we were, um, we are to some extent, or were traditionally organized, a very traditional hospitality structure. What we said was, we got a group of senior leaders in a room, actually at Langdale, in that room that you can see there, 
and we asked them two questions and one of which was what would you do if this was your business the second of which is if we built you a brand new hotel tomorrow how would you structure it and how would it be different and we had all of the directors there all of the board there and we listened to what they had to say and it blew the it's just hospitality out of the water and what we ended up with was we ended up with um, a decision to make. So we knew the structure we had, how we were structured, how we were organized was not going to lead us into the future. You know, the political landscape was changing. I think that dirty word, uh, Brexit, um, was being bantered around. Things aren't getting any easier for anybody, and the hospitality sector certainly isn't getting any easier. You know, hospitality turnover, employee turnover in hospitality is somewhere around 40%. I think that's the general feeling I think sometimes you know it feels much higher it's our numbers are definitely much higher we've got all of these factors you know we talk to our GMs they're saying oh we can't get anybody we can't get chefs that isn't going to change I haven't got a magic wand for that so we had to ask some difficult questions uh, the bean bags are very comfortable then the culture so we have these guiding principles brilliant that's what we tell people we are this is who we are. Actually, when we went round and started talking to people, we realised that isn't who we are. That wasn't the culture in many of our properties. And we have what we cast for is like an invisible web. And we are now starting to unpick that. I, I'd love to tell you it took us two months and we did it all. It, we are still in the thick of it. And this development for all, actually, we haven't got a whole truckload of cash that we can come along with and say, here, somebody else, come and develop all of our people for us. And... You know, we can close our hotels for a day uh, and um, develop them all. We can't do any of that. So we had to find different ways and we had to encourage our people to ask. It can't be just hospitality, so what is it? So we embarked on things like an engagement survey, uh, which was never done in our business. And uh, the results first year, not great. And it took a lot of brave thinking and a lot of real focus to say, OK, it's not just hospitality, is it? This is really us. This is what we're not doing well, and we need to really look at some of this stuff. Uh, that picture you can see there is from one of our internally run courses, and they, they've got one of those sticks, you know, that the communication. So they're not just all lying on the floor. They were in the middle of an exercise. So... This is the list of arms at Malham. Anybody watched, uh, is it Ju Julia, someone or other lately on TV? Was it Julia? Um, it's been on TV lately, yeah. Recommend to go, they've got great pies. So, we're what, two and a half years on now. We're in the thick of it. We're in the thick of the restructure. We're in the thick of the, the you know, unpicking all the cultural stuff. Where has it got us? Well, for one, we have a more engaged workforce. And we haven't done loads of stuff to do. We've just talked to people. That's it. But people seem to be happier when you talk to them. Uh, I'll ask you a lot if you're happier after I've talked to you later. Um, we stuck with the, actually, the behavioral framework. We stuck with the, let's ask people what they think. Five-minute warning. Um, let's ask people what they think. And all we did with the behavioral framework is we just got a group of people in the room and said, how do you think we should behave, all of us? What do you think? And they came up with a load of do's and don'ts, which we use, and they're really simple. It's like, do listen to people, you know, don't talk over people. It's really simple stuff, but it works. Competency framework sounds really grand. It is quite grand, but we looked at it and said, in our business, we focus heavily on technical skill. And I think that can be the same for the, for the sector, for the industry. But actually, what about commercial business acumen? What about leadership skills? So um, we created something that was really easy for people to use and really easy for managers to use, which focused on three areas. And that's really working. Learning and development for all, there was something called, we created something called a training supermarket, for want of a better word. And we said, all right, everything we do needs to be short and it needs to be able to be delivered by a whole variety of people so that we can actually get that, um, start to get people moving, you know, unlock their thinking. We created Thwaites Heroes. These are some of the images on there. Um, we implemented something called Workplace, and it's by Facebook. Now, that was a tricky conversation with the directors um, when we said, yeah, but you can't put any restrictions on it. And we didn't, and it works. 
academies, we decided not to call our training and development apprenticeships. You know, we're a levy payer and we just made that decision, well, we're not going to call them apprenticeships, we're going to call them academies. What, however they're fueled, what does that matter? Internal coaches, we have 12 qualified coaches. We will get 12 more this year, all internal. We encourage them to coach people outside of the business as well as inside. Our learning lab, that's our little icon. Don't steal it. Um, in the meantime, we opened four properties and we bought a couple as well. And we did that with the existing teams. We didn't go out and, and get loads, uh, you know, an opening team. We just did it with the people we've got. And it was hard and it's tough, but we did it. <clears throat> and now we've got about 1,600 people. We're growing. And yeah, we, just a little number in the top corner, we grew the business. The business grew by 15% in two years. I'd say anybody would take that in this day and age. From me, I would say that when we embarked on this journey, we took a decision to ask people what they thought, what they believed all along the way. And it's taken us a bit longer to get there. But genuinely, for us, changing the company culture has to include the many, not the few. Thank you.